Okay, then welcome to the first, um, let's say, coding, uh, remote or online coding uh, cafe or coding game lab. Um, today we will uh, look at shaders in Unity. So, okay, perfect, we're ready. Okay, um, yeah. Uh, so today we will program in Unity. We will do shaders. Um, shaders are basically um, programs that are run on the um, graphical on the graphics chip on the graphics card. And what they do, they basically um, compute like they basically. Um, they basic uh, they basically uh, uh, give you um, for calculate. It's basically a program uh, which gives you out a color, and yeah, I'll show you how you can make shaders, how you can use them in your game, and how everything works. Okay. Um, so if you never worked with Unity before or never um, pr uh, programmed in Unity, this will be a little bit difficult to understand, but if you have any questions, feel free to ask them. And yeah, um, let's start. Um, so first thing we're gonna do is make a new scene and or just stay with this with this scene and just start from scratch. Um, so let me see where I have this thing here. Okay, let's remove everything and let's put this to standard. Okay. So uh, basically with um, shaders you can do a lot of cool stuff, for example having um, uh, ha having uh, waves in, in, in water or, um, or like having outlines for sprites and so on. So the first thing we're gonna do is making, out, uh, making a sprite flash. This is often used in games to signalize that something gets hit. For example, we can make this chest uh, flash white or flash any color we want. And you could do this by just like tinting this, which is a, va a valid solution. But the problem is that um, this tinting only um, only basically uh, multiplies uh, the col like uh, the color of the of the image with this color. So it means uh, so the thing is um, each color uh, has um, like each color each pixel has uh, three four color values, which would be um, let me open uh, editor uh, real quick. Um, yeah. So each each color has like three values: a uh, red value, a uh, green value, and um, blue value. And all of them uh, are between zero and one. And if we want to have um, if we want to have this uh, image like flash in a specific color. We cannot just simply um, tint it. We have to basically um, change the entire color to that color. Because, for example, if we want to make this chest flash white, it doesn't work. Because, for example, if we have uh, um, yellow, or also if we just have um, if we just have red, which would be one zero zero. Uh, we cannot multiply this uh, times white because white would be just one, 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 
so we cannot really um, make this flash white by just saying I want the color of this image to be white. So to actually do that we need to create a shader which basically tells the tells the camera, the renderer, um, the one to, who draws an image uh, that it should not um, it should not simply multiply the color that is on the texture that is on the image with uh, the white color but it should actually change it towards that color based on a value that we want to set right we want to have it for, uh, when it's at zero we want to have the normal image when it's at one we want to have it flash white so and to do that I'll start by creating a shader. So let's create a new folder. Uh, here. Let's call it uh, shaders. So if there's any question or if you're if you like don't really understand what's going on, just um, just ask in the chat. I'll try to answer each question as good as I can. Okay, so in shaders here we can create a new shader. Mm, let's go, uh, where is it? Here, shader. And we have, um, we have different, um, different possibilities here. One is a standard surface shader, one is an unlit shader, one is an image effect shader. One is a, and another one is a compute shader and a ray tracing shader. So basically what, what each of those options are is that a standard surface shader works with uh, light. An unlit shader does not work with light so it cannot be like dark or bright or depending on how many lights you have in your scene. And scene would be everything that you see here like every ob object so that's the main difference between those two so unlit uh, is not affected by light and shadow standard surface shader is then we have an image effect shader which is basically an unlit shader it's just another template and it's used to um, do post-processing effects which I will show you later if we manage to Post-processing effect is basically an effect that's, that gets put on after all the other shaders of each image are, um, are computed, are done. Uh, the post-processing effect is basically an effect which is put then over the whole image. That when you here see the game, after everything is drawn, a post-processing effect is like an effect put on top of it. For example, you could um, s um, change the whole colors, uh, invert the whole colors, or make them make the whole uh, image black and white, and so on. Um, okay, um, let's start making this chest flash. So we create a new shader and we create an unlit shader. Uh, we name name that. Um, uh, Let's name it um, color shader for now. Um, unlit color shader. Or just flash shader, why not? Flash shader, unlit flash shader. Okay. So opening up, um, here the first thing that we like, we first thing that we see here is a um, bunch of code that is pre-written for us and I will guide you like step by step through what everything means so the first is the path and the name of our shader this is only used when we select it um, when when we select it to um, to basically connect it to an image that is done through materials, which I will um, shortly um, show you what they are. So um, basically, uh, this is um, folder, and this is uh, like uh, like this is the menu, 
uh, like this is a submenu and this is the name of our shader we can call it um, um, whatever like um, our shaders and we call this unlit flash shader then here we have properties properties are um, values that are exposed to this material so um, yeah okay I should I should cover what materials are materials are basically um, configurations of shaders like you write the shader once which is uh, code that gets executed and then you can have multiple materials that have um, different kind of values to it so they behave a little bit different for example some have other textures some have other colors and whatnot a texture is basically an image so if you look at this um, here if you look at this um, the texture is basically this image like I can open it up and this is basically a texture just an image so um, here we have the main text which is the name which is uh, a name which um, uh, the name used for the main image of the of the whole shader of the whole um, object and yeah um, okay yeah basically these are properties properties will then show in the material I could I could actually show it to you um, chest here we open sprites default uh, okay ba probably not in sprites default um, hmm, how can I show it show it that best I show I show it afterwards when we when we um, finished up the shader so uh, then we have the sub shader this is basically the part where the shader is written this is basically our shader program then here we have tags which tell us um, uh, which are just basic information that um, the renderer uses to draw things. Uh, render type is basically just a category which says what render type it is. There are basically two render types, uh, opaque and transparent. Opaque are used for objects that have no transparency, so that have no alpha value, which would be this like this slider is the alpha value so um, opaque don't have alpha values and transparent object and transparent objects have that so because uh, we use sprites which are by nature um, transparent we just write here uh, transparent and the same goes for the queue which is basically the order in which um, objects are drawn on the screen so first um, um, first uh, opaque objects are drawn and then transparent if we want to draw it like a step after transparent we can just say plus one so first transparent I transparent is um, is drawn then transparent plus one and then transparent plus plus two and so on we can also say minus one so it's it gets called it it gets drawn before transparent um, yeah this can be used in various different thing uh, for that various different things for example if you use um, stencil buffers or whatever um, but for now we we just just need to note that um, this just says in which order things are drawn uh, things that are drawn after will always be on top no matter the sorting layer we use and sorting layer is basically in which order the, the sprites get drawn so if we say we draw this at transparent minus one this will always be in the back no matter how you change this value because it it gets drawn uh, before all other sprites which are transparent then here we have the pass in this pass is uh, this pass basically um, encapsulates our code so this subshader has just uh, basic information for the whole shader 
and this pass is uh, so to s um, is um, like is is basically our code. It's basically what we do with um, the um, values that we get. Uh, how we determine the color of each pixel. Um, so basically, um, what this is now, this is um, this just tells us that uh, the word is a vertex function and the frag is a fragment function. Um, what those two functions are, I will tell you in a minute. This is um, for fog, which we don't need because we will work in 2D, so we can just delete everything that is fog related. Uh, this includes uh, basic functionalities for the shader, and here we come to the main part of the shader. So shader works between the, the these keywords CG program and NCG, and each shader has two functions: a vertex and a fragment function. A vertex function basically changes uh, the vertices of an object. Vertices is, um, if you're not familiar with 3D programs, uh, vertices basically if, uh, is the model of our, uh, like is uh, basically points in, uh, in a 3D model. And in Unity everything is, tr is 3D, even 2D sprites. And what they do is basically they have um, they have a plane, and on that plane they just put the texture on top of it. So with a vertex shader, you can basically change uh, these the positions of these dots. So you can move the um, move the objects uh, wherever you like. What the fragment function does, the frag fragment function. Um, computes the color. So basically um, a shader, uh, like the shader is is um, executed for each pixel uh, in the object at the same time. So basically what the fragment function does, it gives us the the coordinate where we currently at, the view, uh, which are our UV coordinates. These are basically these basically tell us um, on which position we are currently um, we are currently um, computing the color of the pixel, and uh, yeah, we we get the coordinates and we get the and with the coordinates we can get the color of the texture and. Uh, in, in the fragment function, we basically return uh, the color, which is the color that will be displayed. Um, yes. Okay, so um, I can show you real quick. Let's delete this fog too. And this fog. So everything fog related can be deleted. Okay, so what, what this basically does is it gets the color from the texture and returns this color. So let's um, put this shader, uh, this basic shader which basically does nothing besides um, displaying the image. Let's put this on our object. can delete also this Unity Fog thing. Okay, um, let's put, let's create. So now we um, actually create our first material, which we need to um, make the shader work with this ch with, with this chest. So let's make a new folder materials. And let's create a new material. Um, this is our uh, unlit chest material. Okay, so here you see all the properties of the material. This uses the um, standard Unity shader, 
we do go to our shader which is in our shaders unlit flash shader this is determined by the first uh, line that we wrote like here we say uh, where we can find the shader in our shaders then unlit flash shader so here we can go to um, our shader and unlit flash shader and now we basically have our um, our unlit chest material uh, set up. Now we just need to go to our chest. And here in material, we put our unlit chest material on it. So you immediately see that something is wrong with our shader. Like if we go back and we, and we see that like the chest looks normal if we put the shader on it, we see that there is a uh, color in places where we don't want uh, where we don't want that so what we can do to make that uh, to to fix that is we have to um, blend uh, basically the background with the foreground using the the alpha color the alpha is basically the transparency which I showed you last time uh, which I showed you before. So basically, the alpha value is um, determines the transparency of the sprite, and we need uh, we need to use that in our um, in our shader to determine um, the to 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 say the shader that it should not show the sprite itself, but what is behind it, and that can be done through blending. So to do blending, we just we basically just say blend after the tags and LOD. We can just say blend, and then we um, specify what we want to use to blend the for like the image with the with the background. So here we just do a source alpha and one minus uh, source alpha. So these things you can find in uh, in the Unity uh, documentation. Um, what this basically does is um, it says blend uh, the the foreground with the background by using a um, hundred percent times uh, like um, source. Um, how can I? So um, okay, basically blending. What blending does is it mixes the background with the foreground, so it's basically is blend how uh, much um, foreground and how much background. So uh, if our uh, and we use our alpha value for it uh, for that. So. It basically says that um, so it basically means that these these both um, these both things um, these both variables have a value between zero and one, like both of them. And um, basically, what blending does, it just uh, says um, give me. Um, zero or a hundred percent of this color and zero to a hundred percent of that color so what we do if we say uh, blend um, source alpha with one minus source alpha we just ba we we we, uh, we basically say that if the color of our image has alpha value of one we have a hundred percent. We show a hundred percent of the image and zero percent of the um, background because one minus one e equals to zero, right? So we have um, one. Uh, we show um, uh, the full image and zero percent of the background behind us. But if our alpha value is zero, we have um, zero in source and one mi minus zero in in uh, we have zero uh, if we have zero alpha we have zero in foreground and one minus zero in background which means we show only the background and not the image itself uh, okay 
Let's see if this works. Bam, this solved the problem. Um, so, yeah, basically what this means is that that wherever we have um, zero percent, wherever we, we have an alpha value less than minus, uh, less than one, we mix in the color from the background. Okay, that's for blending. So now let's go and make the chest flash. So to do that, we need to add some properties. Properties are basically um, what we can set up in our material, which is bound to our object. So what we need to make it flash is, first of all, the color we want to make it flash. Actually, what we first can do is, um, before we make it flash, the first thing we can do is make this work again. Because after using um, after using an own uh, shader, we cannot use the tint uh, property anymore. So to do that, we need to get the, um, the color property for our shader. So to do that, we get... Um, we uh, say here in our V2F, the v uh, like both stru uh, structs are basically what we get when we are in our function. Like in the vertex function, we get those two um, values that we can use. And in the fragment function, we get those two. And if we now say uh, fixed for color and column color, this basically says this is the name. We can also name it call or whatever. You can also call it whatever. Um, what this what uh, this is basically the name of our um, of our variable, and this is the type. Color normally has has fixed four, which ha which is um, value between zero, like um, an array of four. Uh, yeah, an array of four values, which all of them have numbers between 0 and 255. So this is like the space, um, the color space of a normal color. And this is basically just the, the name of our um, variable. And this here tells Unity, look, I want to have this color uh, set to here, basically. It's basically, um, to be more precise, it's basically the color of the vertex. So we have to do it also here. Color, column, color. And we have to say also here, O dot color equals uh, v dot color and the same uh, and yeah so basically um, this color change like the color here in the sprite renderer basically changes the color of each vertices so back again these are the vertices those dots and what this color does is basically change the color property of all of those dots and we can use that to just tint our um, to tint our image without actually changing uh, the material. So we can just like tint the image right away here in the sprite renderer. So basically, to do that, we just have a, va a variable that after the column has this um, color word, which basically tells Unity, look. Um, in this in this variable, put me the um, the color of the court, current vertex, and what we do here is basically say um, set this color that we will use in the fragment to the color of the vertex, which is what we do in this line. Uh, and what we can do then is um, color the image based on that. So to do that, we just say um, 
um, the color that we return, the color of the of the pixel of the current pixel, is the um, color of the current uh, texture in the position uh, in the current position, where uh, like in the current pixel pos position where we are currently in, which is our UV, and we multiply that with our um, color, which is E dot color. E is the input and it's basically all those values that we get. So now if we change this, yep, the color of the ch chest um, changes too. Okay, so um, now that we did that, we now want to have the... we now want to um, change the color of this image to white for example. So to do that we need a second color which is the color that we want the, this, um, this image to change to. So we give it a name, let's say a flash color. Flash color and then we say this is a color. So 2D basically means it's an image, it's a texture and if we say color it's a color and then we s give it a um, default value which is let's say white 1111 one, one, one is white which is red one um, green one uh, blue one and alpha value one so this basically gives the um, default uh, value of the color in our material and yeah then we s then we put um, then we put this color. This color is not available yet in our fragment function, which is basically the function that um, that basically colors uh, colors um, is coloring our uh, image. So what we do um, before the function, we say we have a fixed for because fixed for is used for colors. Uh, underscore color, um, flash color. So all properties start with an underscore. This is um, like normally like how it works. And this name and this name have to be the same one. So what Unity does, it takes the value that we put in our material and puts it into this variable that we can use here. So we can basically say instead of instead of having the color of the image, we just say uh, our color fixed for color equals basically just the flash color. Okay, so if we do that uh, and we open our material here, our only chest material we can just change the color. So this is basically what the fragment function does. It just returns a color for each pixel. So um, yeah, to make, the, um, to make the image flash, we just um, need to change the color of the image to that color. Um, yeah, but we, we don't want to have it just white, we want to um, change it from the normal image to the flash Im uh, to the to the colored image so to do that we need an other uh, another value which says how um like wi which which is our um flash progress progress which basically tells uh, uh, which basically makes the um, color of the of of the image change to the flash color, so we call it flash progress, which is this is this basically is the name that we um, that uh, is shown up in the material. So basically, um, this here is basically what we put in in, um, in as a string here. So we say flash progress, and this is um, 
we can say float which is basically um, uh, yeah um, a number right so we can say float but we want it to be between 0 and 1 because that's like 0% and 100% so to do that we say range from 0 to 1 so what this basically does is giving us a slider which makes it that we can only have values between 0 and 1 so we cannot write in free it will always change to 1 okay so we take this uh, pro, uh, this flash progress here and copy it down here and this here is a float because it's not a color it's a number okay and now we go back to our color so this is basically a color what we do now is um, changing this color to the um, changing this color to the um, um, to to the to a flash color based on our progress. So if we have one, we have um, we have the the sprite colored in white. If we have zero, we have the sprite colored in the normal image color, right? So to do that, we just say col equals, and then we use um, a loop function. So what this function basically does is it gives us back so this function has has um, two different um, uh, three, three different parameters one is the value one one is the value two and one is a percentage like a number between zero and one again like it's better like this uh, between zero and one which tells us how how uh, much um, a value is used and how much b value is used one give if if this value is one it gives us back b if this value is zero it gives us back a so basically what we can do here now is say um, we want the normal color which is the color that we get from the image as a and as b we use the flash color and as percentage, we have the flash progress. Okay. Perfect. So we go back. Now it's back to a normal image. And if we change this, it slowly goes to white. But there's again the same problem with the alpha. Because what we basically do is we change it to the flash color. So if this flash color would have zero alpha what we would do here basically would be just making it disappear but what we want is to maintain the same alpha value as the original image so we want it to cut off here we don't want it to go like to that the that the white color goes over the image where it's not supposed to be so to do that we say our alpha value of our color is the minimum uh, minimum which is another function which gives us back the smaller value between a and b so for a we say color dot a and for uh, yeah, and for B we say flash color dot alpha. Color dot alpha. So the smallest one is um, returned, which would keep the alpha value of the image. So if we do this now, there is still a problem. Why? I don't know. Oh, of course. Um, because this color value gets changed by the loop, so we need um, we need to say this is our result color. And yeah, instead of using the flash color dot alpha, we can just use the result color dot alpha. 
So the problem that we had before is that we saved this new color into call, which means that it basically nullifies everything that we want to do because we need this color and the um, resulting color, so the, the flashing color, and we want to have the smallest alpha be the alpha that we have. So it doesn't matter which one has the smallest alpha, it will always uh, like the smallest alpha will always get taken. And now if we do this there's still a problem. Huh, cool. Um oh of course because we have result color we have to return which is basically the color that we want to to show is the color that we computed result color okay so now hopefully it will work yep now we can make it flash and the color we want also like red for example if an enemy got got gets hurt or not okay so how would we implement this then in a game because uh, we have to change this color too right we have to change it while for example a bullet uh, hits this chest uh, then we have like to flash this uh, to make this chest flash or if it's an enemy we make the enemy flash to have more feedback for when an enemy gets hit for example so to do that, we need to make a script. Um, oh, um, why do you use the minimum there? Can't you just use the alpha of the sprite itself? Okay, um, let me go back here. So I could use the alpha of the sprite itself, which would actually also work, right? We can we could also just say. Uh, result dot alpha is just color dot alpha. That would actually also work. So um, if we go back here, this would also work, right? Um, the thing is, what if you don't want it to just flash? What if you want to, I don't know, make it disappear using the same thing, right? Instead of programming. Um, of making additional code, right? You could just uh, make the alpha go um, lower here in the flash color and make it disappear. So if you want to keep that, you can make you can use minimum. Like if we use minimum here, it would also disappear if we put the alpha to zero. Like we could do both, right? We could also make it half transparent. So it's up to you what you want to do. Like, yeah. Um, so, to to um, to give you an answer to the to your question, yeah, we could ju also just use the um, the alpha of the of the texture. Yeah. Okay. So let's do the script. Uh, folder. Let's call it script. And we create a new C sharp script, which is our flash script. Okay, so for a script, what do we need? We need the. Oh, we already have a flash script. Uh, let's delete this real quick and call it. Um, Because I already did a um, script that has the same name. Uh, what happened now? Uh, hello. Okay. So let's call it chest flash script. Okay. Okay, so it is that all the properties of the flash color apply. Yeah, uh, basically that. It's that um, if we if we want to like have it transparent instead of flashing, we can make it uh, also transparent. So yeah, 
basically yeah so we have so both alpha values the alpha value of the image and the flash color alpha get get taken into account and the smallest one is taken basically um just flash script okay so let's start with making a script so that we can make this chest flash. To do that, we just say that we press space, and when we press space, um, the the chest flashes. So to do that, we have we can use um, two variables which say um, how long we want it, uh, like how long we want it to flash. Let's say. Uh, let's give it a duration. This is how long we want the um, flash to stay there. And then we also need our material, which is our chest material. Okay. So, um, Basically, if, if, if you want me to move faster, then just tell me if you want me to move slower and explain more things. You can say that in the chat, so I will uh, adapt to your preferences. Okay, um, so... Uh, we don't need a start method, actually. So what we do, we could use to make it faster. We could use um, coroutines. So what coroutines are? Uh, it's basically um, a function that that gets called in parallel to the update function, which is called every frame. So we can do that by making a new um, I enumerator. Let's call it blink routine. And here, what we basically do is make chest link, wait for duration, and then turn chest normal again. Or make chest normal again. Okay. So to make the chest blink, we need to set this progress value to one. Um, let me show you real quick. So this material, we need to put it to one. So this would make it blink. And then we put it to zero again. So to do that, we just say um, chest material dot set float because we set um, we set a float variable and here we need to give it the name though not this name not this name but we need um, this name to make it work um, flash progress the one with the underscore this is our identifier which tells uh, which um, property you want to change so we do that and we set it to 1. Then we wait. To do that in a coroutine, we just say wait, uh, turn new, wait for um, seconds, and we wait for our duration. Then we do the same thing, and we set it back to, the set the progress back to 0. Actually, we don't need this if we put the script uh, directly um, under the um, under the sprite renderer. So let's just delete our um, chest material, or um, let's make it private. And actually, we need to start now. Because what we want to do is we want to get the material from the sprite renderer. Because we basically will put um, the script in here. And we want to get access to this material. And to do that we just uh, say um, 
chest material equals uh, get component our sprite renderer and then we get the material so in the update now what we do is if we press space then blink okay so let's do that to that to do that we need our input dot get key uh, get key down which is called when uh, the button is pressed and that's key code dot space and if that is done we want to start coroutine our blank routine so the problem with this is that we press space um, really fast faster than duration this routine will be started multiple times so we would have multiple functions that uh, make the make the sprite flash so to prevent that what we can do is having a private coroutine uh, blink and set the blink to start coroutine and we do this only if blink uh, is null so only if blink is null we start the coroutine and at the end here we just say blink equals null what this does is basically we can only start this routine if all the like if no other routine is currently in here okay let's see if it works so let's start our game and let's press space and nothing works because we still have to set our duration and we first of all we need to put our script onto the object S that's the first thing <laughs> we have to do and then we set the duration to 0.5 seconds why not and yeah if we press space our chest blinks nice so what we also could do is having um, an integer which says how often it should blink if we want that so we can just make it blink multiple times right so we just make a loop here for int e equals zero uh, zero uh, um, uh, when e smaller than how often e plus plus and then this basically makes the makes the sprite blink uh, multiple times um, if we want we can also say uh, the duration is divided by how often so what this does it would mean that um, it blinks in like if we set the duration to five seconds it doesn't matter how often we make it blink in after five seconds the whole thing is done so we can now say we want to make it blink three times and I think it did blink three times it was just too fast or I did, too, or I did something wrong mm. I do something wrong uh, duration Um. 
Oh, um, of course, because after we set it to zero, we immediately set it to one. So we sh we need to also wait. We need to wait. So we have the actual blinking, right? Okay, so we need because um, before when we entered here, we set it to zero, but then immediately afterwards we set it to one again. What we now do is we set it to one, we wait, then we set it to zero, and then we wait again, and then we set it to one. Okay, so now it should work. Perfect. And now we can make it flash when it gets hit, which is cool. Um, now let's do two more things. Let's see how far we get. And let's make an outline and let's make it dissolve. Um, so we can still stay in our um, unlit shader. And to keep things organized we can uh, put uh, we can put in square brackets a header here and say um, flashing and here we now make the outline so we say header outline and Yes, I didn't put uh, these things here because if you put, if you make this, it won't work. You literally have to write it like this. So let's make it an outline. We have uh, an outline width, which says how big our outline is. Uh, which is a float and an outline color which is a color and that color is let's make it white again a standard why not um, okay so we need both of these down here. So we have our outline width and our outline color. Okay. So here, this result color is basically our color that we that we got after the flash so this is basically our flash and now we do the outline so to do that we go back to our color equals our result color so that we go back to our color variable or we could actually just work with the result color, so it's not too confusing. Uh, let's call it our flash color. Why not? Let's call it our flash color. Okay. So our flash color is basically uh, the color of our sprite after we did the whole flash thing. Which, yeah, it doesn't matter. It's just important that at the end we have our co we return the right color because we will have like a ton of colors here so um, how will we do the outline I show it to you I show it to you in um, using this image so to have an outline we need to color like everything that's outside where we have um, where we have alpha zero basically, like the first pixel where there is alpha zero. 
Um, to do that, uh, uh, there are multiple ways. One of the easiest ways is to just get this whole sprite. Get this whole sprite, copy it, and put it one above, or two. Right? Uh, let's make it... Um, wait, let's make a new layer so it's easier. So, we get this. We basically copy it. Um, put it here, make it um, white. Okay. So what we basically do is we copy this and put it, for example, two to the right. Then we copy it again, like the original one. And we put it two to the left. And we do that the same for the top and the bottom. So what is basically there, and this gives us then the opportunity to just switch the color out. Then we have an outline. We can then also make it uh, copy it diagonally, so we have like a complete outline without those edges. So this is basically how we will do the the outline. So to do that, uh, we use the UV coordinates, which basically tell us uh, where we currently are. Like to showcase it to you, I can just show you what the UV coordinates are, right? So to so what most people do because you cannot um, print things uh, in in shaders which is sad um, you need to use color to um, actually debug and see what happens if if you cannot figure out um, why something doesn't work uh, wait a second I need to charge my phone or I won't I can't um, talk with you anymore a sec. Okay, all good. Um, sorry about that, but if without my phone, I can't see chat. Uh, so, um, to showcase you the whole uh, UV thingy, I can just uh, show it to you via color. And instead of returning a flash color, I just return the value of the UV, uh, UV, co UV coordinate. So I make a new um, color, which is... Um, uh, in dot um, UV dot X X X. Um, yeah, and we say our test color dot alpha equals one. So what I basically do here is set the uh, oh, uh, dot RGB. So I set the color for red, green, and blue to the X value of the UV to show you what the UV actually is. And then I return the test color. Okay, and there's an error. Uh, fixed for text color equals Mm, okay, this doesn't work like that. Um, why just don't do this? And then have a fixed for... Ah, 
Okay, I just wanted to show you how you can do a swizzle, but uh, apparently it doesn't let me. Oh, I can also just do this. Could also just do this and then say test color dot alpha equals zero. I have one. Okay, so basically what I did here is create um, a, f a color which has uh, four values, but in each value I put in the x coordinate of uh, the UV. So as you can see, the UV coordinate basically is just um, just shows where exactly we we basically are in the in the in the image, and by changing that, we can basically uh, move the whole image. So if I um, say test color color dot RGB plus equals um, also minus equals uh, 0 0.5 we can see that everything is moved to the right because we uh, um, yeah because uh, that the, the um, well, yeah, basically the whole uh, UV coordinate is moved to the right and here to the left we have basically zero. So we can move the whole um, UV coordinate and therefore the image by by adding a number to it, uh, to the UV coordinate. So for example we have the flash color um, and you just say flash like instead of getting this UV we get this UV but plus 0 0.2 right so what this basically does is move the um, move the image into the opposite direction like farther down uh, farther um, uh, to the bottom left even though we added because we added we moved the whole space to one direction but because we move the whole space in one direction the images uh, will be put what oh my god nightbot um uh, what the fuck i'm i'm uh, i'm sorry i'm sorry i don't know why nightbot thought that it should uh, ban you huh can you still write? Huh. Okay, I I I, I should check. Um, okay, I I should check um, Nightbot then. What? <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This happened. <laughs> okay, yeah. So basically, we do what I showed you on the image. So let's do that. Um, so uh, if. Let's make an if because we don't want to do that if the outline width is smaller than zero. Uh, smaller equals zero because then we don't want to make the whole outline thing, of course. Um, so what we do is we basically take the color that we have here, right? the color that we have here and and that's no basically we just do it we just do it from scratch we get a new fixed for outline which is basically this we don't care about the color we just care about actually we just need a float we just need the alpha value. We just need the alpha value. And what we do is basically uh, where, ha where do I have my image? Um, what, what we do is basically this. 
we just get um, the color here like it would be uh, back again to here and then here I think another one whatever but we get we basically get this one and put this here and then we yeah we copy and paste it one once to the right once up once left uh, and down and then we say and then we see and then we color it as a certain color and put the normal sprite above it. That's that's basically what we will do to get the outline. So, um, uh, so first we have to check if we uh, can uh, make the outline. So to do that, we have it. So this would be like the normal square in the middle. Then we need another square which is uh, to the right, so we get this again. But instead of having i.uv, we make a new float2, which, so here we, this is the center one, and this is the right one. So we get the i.u, which is the x-coordinate, plus, uh, or actually I think it's minus here if we want to push it to the right, um, minus our outline width. And we keep our i.v. Then we do it for the left, up and down. Left, do it up and we and we do it down. So for left we just change this to plus. For up we delete both of these because we need to change the V, which is the vertical uh, axis. So I dot U we keep the U Um, okay, so to go up we need to do minus and to go down we need to do plus. It's the other way around because what we do is not um, changing uh, where the image is drawn but changing the space on where the image is drawn. That's why it's inverted. Okay, so now we have uh, basically what we did with the image. And now we check if outline is bigger than zero, because if if the alpha here is zero, zero plus how many times zero is still zero. So if it's not zero, then it's uh, basically in the outline itself. So if the outline is bigger than zero, then we say um if if the outline is bigger than zero but because we want to have it behind the um, the flash color then we don't want to draw it where uh, the flash color is uh visible if the color is visible we don't want to show the outline we, we don't want to put the outline on top of it we want to make put it um behind it so we also say uh, flash color dot alpha is bigger than zero. If that's the case, we say uh, if both of these are true, so if the outline is bigger than zero and our um, image color is bigger than zero, then we say our flash color, which is our result color, I should have like kept it as result color, but yeah, our flash color dot RGB which is our color, equals our um, outline color dot RGB. And this should be it. Okay, so basically what we did is we copied the whole image to the right, up, down, and left. And then we checked if, this of if these copies uh, are um, 
like uh, if these copies uh, are actually there like their alpha is bigger than zero and if we don't have the original image on top of it then we say we uh, change the color to the outline color that we want and we also say that the flash color dot alpha alpha is basically the um, uh, outline color right the um, uh, is, is basically the outline color alpha so we basically can just say our flash color is the outline color so we can also make the outline transparent so it doesn't have to be a um, solid color okay and we have an error oh cuz i'm dumb sorry it's always uv but we need to use uh the x coordinate the x coordinate the x coordinate the x coordinate and here the y coordinate yep uh okay yeah because it's not uh like the uv itself is a flow 2 is um flow 2 so we have to access this flow 2 this uv with x and y we can which is funny instead of using x we could also use r for getting x and g for getting y like r uh G, B, and A are equivalent to X, um, Y, Z, and W, which is funny. <laughs> uh, uh, Nightbot just went nuts. Okay, let's see. And what did this do? This did something, but not what we want. Yeah. So why is this? Um, basically, this is wrong. It shouldn't be. Let's put in another value. A flash color dot alpha. Um, what's wrong here? So if outline. Oh, not smaller equals zero, but bigger than zero. Of course. Then we want to do the whole thing. Otherwise, we don't. This means if it's zero. Yeah. If I put this up, it doesn't work. Okay. Um, let's see real quick. The flash color here. That's smaller. Oh, if, if the flash color equals to zero or smaller equals zero or a, a number that is close to zero, then we do it. We do it if the flash color is transparent, not if it's not transparent. And yes, as you can see, we can now have an outline. So if we now also want to have these be an outline, like the edges, we just do it also um, diagonally. So we copy these right and we do right bottom left bottom up top and down top so um, right bottom uh, would be plus uh, outline width 
and this would be the same here top would be minus and everything else stays the same oh yeah up <laughs> up top yeah this doesn't make any sense um, right bottom left bottom left top uh, like right top and left top so right bottom left bottom right top and we copy this then we copy this yeah okay so this basically takes care of oh this should be minus this basically takes care also of the uh, corners so now we have also the corners fixed and I don't know why the top one is larger I have no clue I think there is mm, why is the top one larger Oh, why is the top lo top one larger? Yeah, because we subtracted twice. Nice. Okay, and now we have our outline, which we can color however we want. Have it red, have it blue, whatever. Which is um, good to show that you can interact with things. And m maybe we don't want in the code to change it between zero and 0 0.05 every time so we could also do a toggle which uh, we can do here we say outline enable why not outline enable that's a float and we put it to 0 so standard it's um, false and we need to use a number because there are no booleans but if we want to have a toggle switch we can put in square brackets material toggle which what this what this does is give us a checkbox without it it would be simply um, a number but we wanted to have an outline enable, like um, a material toggle, which gives us zero if it's not toggled and one if it's toggled. And what we can do is if underscore outline and outline width, then do the whole thing, otherwise don't. And we have also to put the float outline here. Oh, outline enable it's called. We need to call it the exact same as it's called here uh, here outline enable so now we can switch it on and off however we want okay so another thing that uh, uh, that you can do another thing that you can do with sprites is making them dissolve and dissolve is used as, for example, when an enemy gets killed or whatever, to dissolve the whole, like, to make it disappear. And to do that, we need, uh, we, we can do that by uh, having a value which says uh, if, this, if, if the value is bigger than another certain value from the image or from another image, then show the, the, the image or don't. Um, let's do that real quick. Um, so let's make a dissolve. Um, we here have um, 
dissolve progress. Float uh, range again because we use zero to one, and zero to one. The range between zero to one is often used in um, in shaders, not only because it's used in all the functions in the shaders, but also because values in the range between zero and one, like float values, are more precise than outside of that range. So you have more precision if you use values between zero and one. And the farther you go away be, uh, from that range, the less um, accuracy you have. And with accuracy, I mean um, values behind the um, comma. Uh, Nightbot is not nice today. Um, so we have the dissolve progress and then we, n uh, we also need um, another thing to compare this progress to. Um, what we can do actually is compare it to the, um, to, the, to the UV coordinate right now. So we can say if it's behind a certain uh, um, UV coordinate, like show everything that is behind a certain X UV coordinate and everything that's after that don't show it relative to the progress. So let's get the, our dissolve progress here. Okay. And it should be the same name. Yeah. So here now we do our dissolve. So, uh, fun enough, we could do this in um, in uh, in one line, but I try to make it as clear as possible. So, uh, to do that, we just um, use the step function. So, what the step function does, I could actually show it to you via color again. So, we have. Um, our progress, our dissolve progress, and we use our in dot uv dot x coordinate. So it has two values. Um, let's make it again with a and b. A and this would be actually not b, but the time or the the x value or the like the value of a function because step is a function. And it gives you zero if um, the time is below the 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 um, a, and it gives you one if it's above a. So I can show it to you with color. So we have this, and we say our flash color dot RGB equals our step. So this would be the fastest way to show it to you. So now it's zero, and if we put it to one, like this is basically the function, and I think I did something wrong. Um, it gives you, wait, oh yeah, yeah, no, no, basically that. So it gives you zero, because the UI, uh, UV coordinate, coordinates go f between 0 and 1 and uh, like in the x-axis and 0, 1 in the y-axis beginning from the bottom left so the top right corner would be 1, 1 and if we slide this we can see that everything that's now below 0 0.5 is um, black everything that's 0 0.5 or higher is white Basically, it's what this step function does. And this step function, uh, we use the st step function to just tell it if we should so so show something or not. And to show or hide something, we use the um, clip function. So what the clip function does is just say stop rendering. So it basically, this pixel, like if you go down to the, um, if you go down 
and you get to the clip function, uh, it has a value a, and if this value is below zero, it's below zero, like minus 0 0.001, if it's below zero, then it stops rendering. So basically, if I do this, my whole thing is invisible. If I put it to zero, my whole thing is visible. So we can use it to um, to make certain things disappear. So for example, we can use this uh, step function to make it disappear. So the problem here is though that the step function gives you a value between 0 and 1. So if we want to have a negative value, we have to subtract 1. So it gives you a v gives us a value between minus 1 and 0. So only if it's 0 it works, otherwise it doesn't. So now we can do this. Which is cool, but we want to make it dissolve in like various different ways, right? So to do this, um, the, ba uh, the thing that most uh, people use, or like everyone uses, is using a texture to do this. So we don't have something linear, but we have an image that we can uh, use to make, to do the, this dissolve. So we use a dissolve texture. texture and this because it's a texture it's an image we say 2d and then we have um, two diff uh, three different actually four different kinds of textures one is um, using white which basically gives every pic if the texture is not set every pixel will be um, white black if you set it to black, every pixel will be not only black, but also transparent. Black would be the equivalent to um, 0, 0, 0, and 0. So it will be completely transparent. And then you have um, gray, um, gray, which is um, everything is 0 0.5, besides the alpha, which is 1. So it would be 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and 1. And then you have bump, which is used for normal maps. And normal maps are used for light uh, lighting. So um, that's like a reserved thing for normal maps. So what we do is we could use, uh, actually we could use black. Yeah, I think I think black is appropriate for this texture. We will see. If it doesn't work, we can change it to white. So what we do here is we need um, to get a texture. We need a sample 2D. It's called, which uh, basically gives us a color if we give it um, a UV coordinate, and the sample 2D is the dissolve texture. Okay, so to get now the, um, so uh, what we now will use is basically just one color. So we don't care which, um, like we, 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 this, this texture that we will use will be black and white because we don't care really if it's colored or not. We just care about the data it provides basically. So textures are not only images, but they can have uh, data encoded into them through color. So what we do here is instead of we, we still use that the step function, but instead of using uh, the UV coordinates, we say uh, text 2D, which basically gives us um, the color using the dissolve texture. and our UV coordinates. Now we need the UV coordinate coordinates though from the dissolved texture. To do that, uh, we have to, um, we have to uh, actually, can you do it? I think you can only do it in, um, no, you actually can do it. 
Um, what you need to do is having the have a UV2 and saying this is text coordinate 1 which maps it to the second texture and I need to do it here too basically you you actually don't need to do this you could actually actually we don't we don't need to do this you can do it with uh, you can have separate UV coordinates for each texture if you want but you can also just use the UV coordinate of the normal texture because it doesn't really matter um, so we can just use in dot UV um, okay and we here care only about um, the red or the blue or the green or the or the uh, or the green it doesn't matter it's a black and white picture where every color is the same so we can also just use red so let's do that and here we have the problem we don't use black we should use white why because if we don't set the texture we don't want to have it transparent because if everything is white the clip will be zero and it won't clip everything okay so text there is no texture set and here I prepared um, a noise mm -mm, sprites a noise sprite where is it here noise pattern you know, or or this one like it doesn't matter and this basically has um, yeah colors from black to white and we use that for our <coughs> for our distortion so let's go back to our chest and put this noise in let's lock this so it doesn't disappear and uh, here sprites let's get the poly noise in here yeah and now basically if we dissolve it bam. what we can now also do to make it a bit more fancy is that we can have um, that we, we, we can color it for example we can have the edges have a specific color then we can make it for example burn away or something so to do that we have we need um, dissolve color um, which is the color that we use let's make it white again and uh, dissolve with which uh, basically uh, tells us uh, which basically says uh, how far we want to go with the with the color like we w don't want to call everything but we want to color um, a part of the of the um, of this line like having it predict the future so to say so we we say um, yeah basically how far in into the future this this um, this color should be um, yep and this equals to zero so um, this is our dissolve so we can delete this and we can keep this because this basically is, uh, means that if it dissolves we don't really care about anything else we could actually put the dissolve on top because um, and but then then there is a problem with the color now let's 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 keep it at the bottom because if the if if clip is minus one it would just stop so if 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 we if we um, 
like delete it and delete the pixel anyway we don't need to do everything else but the problem is then with the color and to make things fast I think I just use this method so now we want the color uh, to do that we use um, smooth step function smooth step similar to step it gives you zero if the value is under like a smooth step looks like this smooth step so it has value a value b and then the time um, this time would be again the value of our dissolve texture this would be when it is uh, if it's lower than a it's zero and if it's um, higher than b it's uh, it's one and everything in between is smoothed out like uh, best thing is to show you it here uh, smooth step smooth step yeah everything is like smoothed out like this uh, I think it's also good to show it uh, via color so we can do the same thing we did before with the um, x coordinates and like uh, put away the clip and have the in dot uv dot x here and then we have um, a dissolve progress and we have the dissolve progress plus our dissolve width okay we have to put these two variables down here too so dissolve color and dissolve width we have a fixed for dissolve color and a float dissolve width okay and there is an error because Oh, uh, at the end of here of um, texture 2D, you have to put these brackets. That's why. Okay. So now we have the dissolve progress, which oh, um, we need the flash color equals this and flash color dot alpha oh just dot rgb again okay so we can show it so i can show it to you so this does the same thing but if we increase the width here we see that it smooths out like it basically smooths out this is what that smooth the smooth step is like okay so everything between uh like the everything um, lower than a is zero everything higher than b is uh, one and everything is moved out in between and you can use this for many things to smooth out edges and whatnot and we here use it to color it uh, to the um, dissolve color that we want so what we do here is we say that the flash color dot rgb also if um, flash color dot alpha bigger zero because we only want to do it if it's bigger zero like if we see it oh actually it doesn't matter because if we don't see it we don't see it because we just um, work with the color and not with the alpha so the color is um, we lerp it again between two colors uh, let's make uh, this um, wait let's make this a variable so float a smooth step which is our um, solve color is our smooth step so we have this in a variable and then we make uh, we do um, 
a loop where we uh, say we want to have the flash color.rgb if it's zero I think and uh, we I want to have the solve color where is it the solve color if it's one or above uh, if it's one and we then put in our dissolve color uh, okay this is a bit unfortunate let's uh, dissolve color percentage put our dissolve color percentage as our um, as, uh, as, as our value how much we want it okay so going back to this um, wait it's not the UV it's actually the texture that we want you can also put this to in a float float resolve text equals this thing so we don't need to do it multiple times saves up um, uh, makes performance better and we use this here too okay and there is an error why because there is one bracket too much okay and yeah now if we dissolve okay I did it the exact opposite way uh, so to fix that we just need to swap these out or put that one minus before it like both works and now when we dissolve it it will get painted white now we put this clip to it clip into and what's the problem here here we are missing one okay we put this in two then then it should work why doesn't it step dissolve progress dissolve tax minus one huh before right huh okay weird 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 why doesn't it work anymore um, the texture is in yeah huh Weird, weird. So I get the texture here. I get the red value. I do clip. I get the dissolve progress, which is the progress where I want it to be. And then I look on the thing. Huh, it should work. There another error which I'm unaware of. <gasps> no. Hmm. Let's see. Yeah, this works. Uh aha. Uh -huh. I am on the chest, right? I'm on the chest. Doesn't make any difference. Uh, okay. Hold on. 
What's the problem here? Solve tax is Yeah, it's the texture. Huh, why doesn't it not work? So, um, hmm. let's see what this gives us. dot rgb equals this oh okay okay I think I figured it out does this work But if I do this, it works. That's weird. No. Hmm. There is a problem. Oh, I know where the problem lies, I think. Yeah, um, this is the problem. So this is a step function, but the minus one is not in the step function, but outside. Should be like this. That's the problem. So we can put this here again. Okay. Think yes. Okay. So did that and okay, we are back where we were. So problem was that um I subtracted the color of the dissolved texture with one instead of subtracting the uh the result of the step function um, with one. So that was the problem. Okay. Now we dissolve it. And now we have also, we can also have this with. And then we have also like, can dissolve it with one. So the problem that we have now is that if we go to one, we still have some artifacts left can also color it, I don't know, a red, like make it fiery. It's like it burns down. Maybe a strong or red. I don't know color that much. <laughs> this is like more like blood or something. Uh, okay, so the problem that we have here is that we have artifacts in the beginning and artifacts in the end. This is because we have to shift um, the whole thing uh, with the width. So where can we do that? Um, um we can do it here by saying um, 
what's the best way to do this? Uh, we have to have an I think an own progress. Let me just figure it out real quick, then I can explain it better. Plus um, solve with. Okay. And then we use the progress. Okay. So basically, what I did, like now we don't have artifacts in the end, we still have artifacts in the beginning but at least not in the end, which is good. So what I basically did is put the whole progress here, uh, like shift it the amount of um, of width that we have so that we are sure that uh, when we are at one that there is nothing left. Okay, so this means that now when we are when we are at one minus um, one minus zero point one two five that this is basically the last thing. So what we need to do now is to extend this like um actually shift it again shift it again um, shift it again here uh -um, dissolve with see Okay, no, never mind. Okay, never mind. This is not the way to go. This was not the way to go. Um, how do I make this best? I have this, I have this. Um, wait, maybe I did something wrong here. What if I put a minus here? Let me see. No, it was right. Uh, what's the problem with the artifacts? Mm. Oh, maybe, wait, maybe I was right. With the progress, I just uh, did it wrong. Um, not this equals um, this one instead of plus minus dissolve with, which makes more sense, I think. Yep. Nope. Nope. Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. Ah, uh, let me think. Uh, let it make. Let me make it white again, so I see it better. Uh. 
Okay, so to get rid of them, we just add it. But adding doesn't help. Oh, I know why, because I have this from before. This should be in here. This should be in here. This shouldn't be in here. That maybe was the case. Minus dissolve. Okay, and now we have the problem from before. Which basically means that we need to add this thing to. Okay, we need to. Okay. Ah, uh, what's the problem here? Um, we have this. We change from the dissolve color to our flash color. Which is perfectly fine. But we don't want to have it in the beginning and in the end. Um, do I go in the wrong direction? Maybe I do. Maybe I do. Let's see. No, I don't. Huh. How do I fix that? Because I start with zero, then I add this width to it. Um let me have a check how I did it in the example. Um I did Oh, I did it completely different. Yeah, basically what we can do here now, what we can do here is we say, it's not the cleanest thing to do, but right now I don't know how to fix that. So we could say if the, so we go back to what we had before. So without the dissolve, without this progress thingy. Go back to what we had before. And we just say that if our um, uh, dissolve progress uh, sm is smaller equals zero, um, like we do this. We, we dissolve, like we only paint it if our progress is uh, bigger than zero. So if we have the progress that is bigger than zero, then we, then we um, paint it, otherwise we don't. So this is basically um, 
basically telling it if our progress is zero, don't use the white thing. And to actually uh, get rid of the artifacts, we do um, um, which should be always the case, right? So if you can put it in the beginning, if our dissolve progress is bigger than bigger or equal than one, we say clip minus one, which basically means if we completely dissolved our image, uh, don't show it. That's it. And yeah, unfortunately, this is all I could show you today because I ran out of time. It's already half past eight. So I hope this, um, this helped you to understand what shaders are or how you could use shaders for your also like for your own game project um, yeah there were like there were more things planned but it took longer than expected and yes this was uh, the first online coding game lab so if there if there was any if there is any feedback um, feel free to um, yeah, feel free to say what you um, what you think about this um, online coding session. It's a bit more difficult because you are not like in person, how we would do like how we would usually be in the at the university. But yeah, I thought to um, mix things up by showing also the program programming side of a master course. I thank you for uh, participating and yeah, see you next time. Bye.